This is an introduction to breadboards. So what a typical breadboard looks like. If we want to make it fit a little better on this page, then we can turn it sideways. Now, on the back there's paper to cover up the connections, but if we take off the paper, we see it looks like this. So we see we have these lines of metal that go along this way, and then we have these vertical lines here. Here we have a slightly different breadboard. If we look at it, now we notice that there are actually two lines. One here, one here, and then one here, and one here. You notice two of them are red and two of them are blue. Here we have yet another kind of breadboard that looks a little bit similar. It also has two, but if we look at it on the back, we see it looks like this. So now we see, while we have this line here, we see a break here before it continues here. Same thing here and here. There's this break here and a break here. So the connections underneath the breadboard make it possible to connect things on top of the breadboard. So, again, if we look at the first one in the normal orientation, which is vertical, looks like this. And again, from the back, it looks like this. So, each of those metal bands means internal connections, so this row on the breadboard is connected. However, across this trough that goes down in the middle, there is no connection, so these points here are not connected to those there. The column down the side is connected, because remember we saw the steel bands there. And as you saw in the third example, they may or may not continue all the way down. There may be a break part way down. Chips are usually placed over the trough so that one line of pins is on one side of the trough and the other line of pins is on the other side of the trough. So this means that four connections can be made to each pin on a chip. So for instance, each of these four pins, each of these four holes allows a connection to this pin of the chip, which is in the fifth hole. It's important to make sure there's no bent pins on the chip, because a pin that's bent under the chip may not actually be in the hole, but would look like it is. Usually the power pin for a chip, or VCC, is on the upper right. So that means, as before, we would have four places to connect in a row such as this. So if we use the right column for VCC here, then it means we have an easy connection to make here. You'll notice I've colored these in red. Again, we should always use red for VCC. The ground pin on a chip is most of the time on the lower left. So, if we use this left column for ground, then it again makes an easy connection across to that pin. And again, we should only use black wires for ground, as I've indicated here. So in the lab, that looks something like this. Here we see a chip. It's across the trough. One line of pins on this side, one line on this side. The VCC pin is in the upper right, connected over to this column. The lower left is the ground, which is connected to this column. Now connecting to those columns down the side becomes really valuable when we have more than one chip. So we see we have two chips in this case. Each of them has their VCC chip on the upper right connected to this, what we call a bus. Each of them has their ground on the lower left, which connect over to this, what we call a, bu what we call a bus. So when we connect power, it looks something like this. Now, if we have multiple breadboards, then we can connect them like this. Notice that we have a single connection from power, a single connection from ground, and then we daisy chain the ground wires 
so that the bus, the ground bus of this board is connected to the ground bus of this board, and so on, and over in this case to a debugger board. And the power, the VCC bus of this board is connected to the VCC bus of this board, which connects to the VCC pin on the debugger board.